My name is Mario Caro. I am an art historian and I work on uh, curating and writing about contemporary indigenous art issues and I'm here with Sarah Sense and maybe you can introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Sarah Sense and I am a visual artist um, who's also done some curating and um, I think that I would probably define myself mostly with my art as a researcher and storyteller um, and a photo weaver. But I wanted to start off by asking you to talk about your art practice and how that developed and eventually how that took you to New York. Sure. Um, well, my, my main art practice, as I said, is photo weaving. And I started doing um, this work in 2004 when I was still a grad student at Parsons. And at the time I was doing painting and some abstract expressionist stuff that um, then led to me sort of painting and drawing basket patterns. And my research was really focused on the history of um, Chittimacha baskets. My mom is Chittimacha and Choctaw, and um, I had been spending my summers for a few years out in um, Louisiana on the Chittimacha reservation and became really interested and sort of emotionally invested in the basket weaving practice as a tradition, but also as um, sort of an artistic practice that was a part of my family and a part of my ancestral history. One of the things that I realized when I was becoming engaged with the basket weavers is that this was a tradition that was passed down generationally through family. Um, my mother is in a basket weaver. Uh, my grandmother is a basket collector, but not a weaver. And so I felt that there was a big disconnect. And that sort of feeling of being an outsider with something that I was in some ways a part of and in some ways not a part of sort of exposed a struggle um, that I had to be really honest about. And my way of dealing with that or sort of like um, understanding how that could be a part of my work is what I believe brought me to those ideas of how can I, what can I weave, how can I bring weaving into my art without necessarily weaving the river cane. And um, so while I was on the reservation in that, in the summer of 2004, I um, photographed a lot of the reservation landscapes, which included an image of a tanning salon called Tanning uh, Native Tan. And in that same trip, I asked the then chairman, um, Al LeBlanc, if I could have permission to weave using non-traditional materials. He gave me his blessing after a very nice conversation. And I um, went back to New York thinking about what I could weave and it just became a sort of natural idea while I was on the airplane flying back. Why don't I weave that photo of the tanning salon? And so I think it was quite soon when I got back to New York. Um, I would actually say within the 24 hours that I printed eight by tens on my printer. Then I cut those three into strips and I just followed, you know, followed the pattern because mm -hmm. I'd never was taught how to weave and um, ran into some friends on the street the next day and they said, oh, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm going to Staples to get more ink because I'm doing this new thing. And they were like, oh, well, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't know. I'm cutting photos and I'm putting them back together. And I just remember feeling really um, 
almost stupid. Like I didn't know how to explain what I was doing and that's how raw and fresh it was. And I, I really like thinking back to that moment and it helps me to remember what it felt like to be like in the beginning of something that has now become my, the you know, core my of, career, yeah. my work, my, yeah. And my, how I relate, you know, messages and stories and family histories. Um, so yeah, that's how it started. <laughs> there are two things um, that are relatable between the painting and the weaving. And one is um, the numerical process for me. It's a numerical sequence, that's what a pattern is. And then color is another very like relevant correlation. Really interested in color, whether it's with painting or with photography. Matching the colors when I'm weaving, you know, some things pushing forward and pushing back and disappearing within each other. So. But I just want it all. I am learning the traditional chitta matcha basket weaving and my mentor in this process is a man, mm -hmm. um, John Paul Darden, and his wife has also helped uh, Scarlett. So they're a perfect example of a man and a woman, they're partners and they both weave. And the issues that I do deal with have, there are have so much to do with um, gender mm -hmm. and being a woman, being a female Native American woman. There's a really important point about my education. When I went to undergrad and to grad school, for my entire undergraduate and education, you know, for part of my graduate education, I had no idea that there was a Native American art movement. And it wasn't until I was in New York and accidentally stumbled upon the um, National Museum of the American Indian by chance when I was trying to find my gym. I um, ended up on, you know, at the bottom of these huge stairs that are the entrance to this incredible building that is the National Museum of the American Indian, the Smithsonian. And there was a banner at the top with baskets and I thought, well, this is why I'm lost because I'm supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. This was a part of my journey that I think was very real, that was very much laid out for me. And I was kind of along for the ride. I was new to New York. I was 23 years old. I um, was just starting grad school. It was intimidating. All of it was intimidating. And I felt really strongly about doing this research about these baskets. And while I was doing this, not knowing about the contemporary Native American art movement or that it had been going on, you know, since the 70s, I guess, or 60s, um, and that there was a school, you know, dedicated to it in Santa Fe. This was just totally unknown to me. And I remember when I did learn of it while I was in New York, feeling a little bit like, cheated in a way that I had that gone to you five years of undergraduate studying art and then grad school in New York studying art and for seven years the only um, time that I learned about Native American art was when I went off and when researched it on my own <laughs> and then would bring it to my classes and and do these presentations on it. Um, when I did that first weaving, it all came together. It made so much sense to me inside. Right. At that point, I got a lot of support from the professors. It, They're yeah. professional artists who saw finally what I was saying. It, it solidified is. everything all mm -hmm. of a sudden, mm -hmm. and it clicked, and it made That's sense. It. The aesthetic crossed over a boundary into something that was understood pop culture, Hollywood imagery, digital media, 
and yeah, the aesthetic of traditional weaving. I think that the entry point for the work was the landscape. So it was okay. definitely um, that very personal experience that I had with the land, with the community, with um, my family there in Louisiana. And um, from there, I then sort of turned to look at my childhood and any misconceptions or um, sort of impressions that I was given about being uh, Native American. How was I taught as a child what my heritage was? Mm -hmm. So I started looking at the childhood photographs and found, you know, was reminded of paintings that we had in this one room that we called the Indian room because it was drawings that and paintings that my mom had collected and, and my mom called us her little engines and it was sort of like playful and um bizarre okay. to think about and there wasn't any real like effort there to be like okay so this is where grandma's from this is where grandpa's from and this is you know it was sort of it, there was nothing to put the pieces together yeah. once I started you know once I did the childhood photographs then I looked at the um, the Hollywood influences and I recall my mom telling me when I was younger like that she just loved Holly like old Hollywood westerns and that she used to watch them with her dad and she would sort of paint these memories of um, of her and and she had this real love affair with these films and the more that I would sort of educate myself about the films it was like okay this is really bizarre so it was taking it you know another step so there's all of that these sort of misconceptions and that we that were sort of like led into our lives and then there's also the realities of the dynamics of the family. And this can be really sad, and this can be really, um, you know, the parts of family history that you don't wanna talk about. So for me, I think we, I started with my childhood and looked at like the kitsch, the iconography, the dressing up um, and sort of the playfulness of it not to make fun of like it was very it was very real and like mm. honorable what she was trying to do and then looking at you know taking it a step further like these Hollywood films like the Hollywood westerns and so then that was the Hollywood series of sort of like bringing in those um like bringing back to life those characters and weaving myself into those images acting out the Indian princess or the cowgirl so it was, again, taking a step further back in time. So I'm, you know, very much alive in the photos, but perhaps weaving myself in with an actor that's passed away. They were all for movie posters that I found in LA. One was um, a woman, a really beautiful brunette with big hair and had three men around her. And it said, one to take her, one to love her, one to kill her. And so oh, I took <laughs> oh, myself and wove myself into that poster, but with the gun pointing at the audience. And then under me, um, the men are like falling over at my feet. Right. So they're like dying. So it was sort of like taking back right. the control. And that's, that's, the gen that's where the gender stuff right. comes into play. It started, I think, with the Hollywood series. And then from there, I think the traveling then changed the work a bit and it started to become about, I think it became more serious and less like pop culture and more about landscape and, um, and more spiritual. I think the work definitely now is, has so much more to do with the connectedness of land and our experience with land. Uh, that was sort of my journey of, um, of my photo.